Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is perhaps the king of the hill in mid-sized off-road pickup trucks. This is the new 2024 Chevy Colorado ZR2 AEV Bison. I'm at the 2024 Houston Auto Show. Trucks are king here in Texas. Let's see what this off-road truck is capable of. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads. Yes, I am at the Houston Auto Show. This is perhaps the baddest off-road pickup truck on the market right now for 2024. This is the new Colorado ZR2 AEV Bison. And before we get into too much about the AEV side of things, let's talk about what powers this. This is the same high output version of that 2.7 turbo that we find in all other Colorados. The only difference between this and the base uh, version of the Colorado are some internal bits. But generally, as long as you don't get the work truck, you can spec your Colorado up to this 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, which is very class competitive, but with options uh, from Ford and the Ranger Raptor and the new hybrid iForce Max engine from a Toyota and the Tacoma, you're really gonna have to step it up in the mid-size game uh, to stay competitive. This 2.7 liter four cylinder is mated to an eight speed automatic and of course gets four wheel drive in this ZR2. As we close the hood, you can see this thing looks menacing in black, all the black up front and uh, the LED lightings, the flow tie that allows extra air to that 2.7 liter. You get that kind of flat, satin black uh, power bulge on the hood, which unfortunately is just glued on, but you do get a really menacing look here on the ZR2 AEV Bison. What the AEV Bison is, is a partnership in collaboration with American Expedition Vehicles, AEV, and their mascot is the Bison. So that's what we get here. We get these boron stamped steel uh, front bumpers, tons of skids underneath. You can see kind of a relocation of the red tow hooks on this one and all that underbody protection as we look back behind. As we come around to the side, let's talk some off-road numbers on this one, shall we? We have a 38.2 degree approach angle, 26.9 degree departure or breakover angle, 26 degree departure angle, 12.2 inches of ground clearance, 131 inches of overall wheelbase. The tow capacity on the AEV Bison does go down a little bit because we are carrying a little extra weight with the steel skid plates and all the steel added on this one. So we have a 5,500 pound tow capacity and this truck starts just north of $60,000. As we come around to it, you can see we get these very massive Goodyear Wrangler Territory MT tires, these 35 inch tall tires on 17 inch wheels. So we've actually gone down from the off-road wheel and tire package on the standard ZR2. These are AEV designed wheels, very specific. They are similar to what is on the Silverado AEV Bison. We do get these rockers. Uh, side sill protection on this one, body protection. And being that this one is all blacked out, you really can't tell the odd placement of the Colorado badge on this, but we'll, we'll give them a pass on that. We do get these exaggerated over fenders. If you get the GMC Canyon AT4X, which is the, uh, a similar uh, pickup truck to this, you get actual metal fenders that actually stick out more than the exaggerated plastic over fenders on this one. We do get a nice ZR2 Bison back here on the back. Nice stamped tailgate. Again, AEV Bison specific uh, stamped uh, rear bumpers with better off-road angles. A damped tailgate here with tailgate storage built into it. So Ford has got the C clamp uh, locations on their tailgate. Uh, Chevy is offering you some in tailgate storage here on the Colorado. You can see we do have the spare tire mounted back here in the back because you are gonna want a full-size spare if you get out somewhere uh, and get into some trouble here in this pickup truck. Nicely damped tailgate, very nice, easy to lift one-handed, but you can take a look here at just all the different approach angles that this gives you. We don't get these side steps on uh, standard Colorados like that trail boss over there. 
because we get these AEV specific uh, rear bumpers, but it does increase your departure angle. Uh, it just tucks everything up underneath the truck a little bit. While we're talking off-road tech, let's actually peek behind the rear tire here. You can see we get these DSSV Multimatic F1 style off-road dampers that are very uh, specific to the ZR2 line of vehicles. And the jump stops are actually uh, beefed up as well for some serious off-road high-speed clearance and uh, capability here on the ZR2 AEV Bison. As we move into the interior of this one, you can see much like the Silverado ZR2s, we get the yellow accent stitching and the contrast, the gray and black uh, stitching and materials in here. We do get two-person memory seats up here, which is really nice here in this midsize segment. Express down driver's window, but not all four windows. That's an interesting omission, I guess. And then you can see we do get power seats here with just two-way lumbar, but it is still nice. These are heated. These are ventilated. We get the AEV uh, logo embroidered there in the headrest. A nice contrast all the way around here on these seats. We don't get an A-pillar mounted handle here, so trying to climb into this lifted truck, you are going to be grabbing the steering wheel. And again, part of the AEV package are these uh, laser-cut floor mats uh, that you are absolutely going to want. We did have the Trail Boss version of this truck with carpeted floor mats. If you're taking a truck off-road, get the off-road floor mats. But We'll go ahead and climb in here behind the steering wheel. It is a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. You can see here uh, we've got uh, some leather look up here on the dash. More yellow stitching, this digital camo look. I really like the round uh, AC vents on the exterior here. And then we get these rectangular ones here in the middle. Very nice look, more of that digital camo. I think the build quality in here is a little bit nicer than the GMCs overall. Uh, the GMC that we had squeaked when you looked at it the wrong way. You can see we do get dual zone automatic climate control with heated and ventilated seats. A lot of buttons, they're very button heavy here in the HVAC controls. 11 inch uh, infotainment system here, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Full digital gauge cluster, not the smaller version and the lesser trucks. So I like that you get the full gauge cluster and all the controls for that here on the steering wheel. Your volume and tuning are still on the backside. We get a lot of toggle controls down here for off-road stuff. Locking rear, locking front uh, differential on this one. Auto start stop off your uh, hazard lights. Uh, lane keep an auxiliary switch for if you want to put a winch or something on this and what I call the fart button or the toot button drops all four windows USB A, USB C, Qi wireless charger, eight speed automatic transmission. I like that we still get a mechanical lever, electronic two speed transfer case with different drive modes. I really like the terrain, one pedal driving, electronic parking brake, side by side cup holders, a spot for your phone, I guess, decent center console storage, but you have to remove. Uh, this tray to actually get down to it. So that's a little bit weird to me. At 510, I can get pretty comfortable in here, even with the sunroof, all kinds of room above me. Just a set standard size sunroof with a manual closing and opening shade. Nothing to sneeze at there. This is about my driving position. I, I think it's a little bit further back than I would normally drive. Just keep that in mind as we climb back to the back. And one last thing, we, this does get a trailer brake control, but it is over your left knee, which is a slightly weird spot for it. Sliding out of the driver's seat, we'll go ahead and come to the back seat of the Colorado. Much like all other Colorados, we get a 60-40 split bench rear seat. You do have to pull a latch or a lever to get to it. Interesting packaging underneath here. You're not really usable space underneath, but uh, I do like how the 40% is on the passenger side. That's where we normally put Tucker's car seat. Putting in car seats is very easy. He would have a lot of fun if and when we get this one to take it off road. No grab handle back here either. So Tacoma offers it, uh, some other trucks offer it. Interesting that you're just kind of left to your own to climb back here in the back. Got to grab the door, I guess, uh, to climb in. I'm just gonna go ahead, step in and climb in. Decent size back seat back here. Again, maybe gain half an inch more room uh, if I put the seat really where I drive it. Uh, get a couple cup holders back here, a couple AC vents, some USB power, fold down center armrest back here, decent size headroom, uh, nothing, just 
overly outstanding back here. It's a truck. It, it works just fine. It's not the best back seat. It's not the worst. I do think Ford has perhaps the best rear seat in the midsize pickup truck game with the Ranger. Go check out that video. But all around, very comfortable interior here on the AEV Bison version of the Chevy Colorado ZR2. If you do want to see more from us here at the Houston Auto Show or the eventual test of this, if and when we get one on our home turf, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell so you are notified every time a new video drops. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, from the Chevy booth of the 2024 Houston Auto Show, till next time, gearheads, bye.